and thank you for joining me today. So today I thought I'd share a few more of my completed colouring pages that I've completed since I started my colouring journey. And the books I would like to concentrate on today are my Japanese edition books or my the Japanese illustrators um, like Kanoko Igusa, Iwi, Naoko Neko and Makiko Inotome. I think those are the artists um, I have books for. And so, yeah, I thought I'd just come on here and share a few of those completed um, colouring pages. And um, yeah, I was thinking if I could join in some of my Korean artists or illustrator books as well, but I haven't actually completed any pages in those books. So um, that will come later on. Hopefully next year I'll be able to show you some completed pages from the Korean edition books. All right, so my first book is by Kanoko Igusa and this is Symphony of Cute Animals. And I've only done one page in this, sadly, even though it's a small book and you think um, you'd be able to complete pages really fast. I'm quite intimidated by her work. Um, it, her work is absolutely stunning and I want to do her work justice and I want to enjoy um, my colouring process um, in her books and, you know, just uh, develop as a colourist in her books because there's so many lovely illustrations, so many themes to colour that there's a lot that you can develop like your flowers or your animals things like that so um yeah i take my illustrations in her books quite slow so i don't have that many completed pages in her books but this is the only one i have completed in this book i did it for easter this year and i have got a completed uh i mean a video for this um a color along for this particular page on the channel so you can always check that out I used a combination of my Faber Castell Albrecht Dura pencils, wet in the background, dry for um, colouring the foreground. I'm sure I must have used, I want to say I used some Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing, but I can't remember. Some of these I'm not going to remember exactly what I used, even though I use very limited supplies, as you guys all know. Um, but sometimes for certain pages, I don't use all my medium so um i do forget but yeah i really like how this page turned out i knew i wanted to make the eggs look a little bit like glassy or ceramic um sort of a look and i think i sort of achieved that um but yeah i really enjoyed coloring that page um i don't know if the lighting is that great but it is quite a gloomy day today um so but hopefully you guys can see okay but yeah so that's my first page, and that's from Kanoko Igusa's Symphony of Cute Animals. Sorry, I'll just take my tabs out. Then the next one I have again from Kanoko Igusa's, uh, from Kanoko Igusa is Minuet de Bonheur. And I absolutely love this book. And I have a couple of pages. So I'll show you my first one, which I thought was, um, it wasn't that successful. Um, but this is the first ever page, I think, I coloured of Kanoko Gooses. Yeah, it is. Um, and I coloured it last year for summer, obviously. And um, I like certain elements of the page. I feel like it's turned out more like a children's um, picture book sort of illustration with all the bright colours. Like the sand looks really, really bright rather than more realistic. Even the water looks really bright. And I know I didn't like how I did my sky because I didn't blend very well at the top there. As you can see, it is such an abrupt change from the blue to the pink. So the blending wasn't fantastic, especially there. So I wasn't happy with that, but I couldn't seem to correct it. Um, but that's okay. So I used soft pastels for doing the back, uh, for the doing the sky. And then I used... Um, my Albrecht Dura pencils, pretty much dry, I think, for everything other than the sea and the sand. And then I went over with the pencils dry. And I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing a few elements, um, laying out the colours. So when it's a busy page like this or a page which has so many different elements on it, I like to use my Tombow Jewel brush pens just to lay out colours so I know where all the colours are going to go. Um, so, yeah, that's what I did um, for this page. I like how it turned out generally. I really like the colour of my frog and um, I could have, I don't know why, this was one year ago, I did have Poscas but I could have used my Poscas a little bit more 
to white out certain lines to make it look a little bit better but I don't seem to have done it for any not that much really other than the dots and the pattern on her dress here so I'm not sure um yeah why I didn't um make use of my Posca white pen pen a little bit more but anyways that's the first ever page I did of Kanoko Agusa and then the only other one I have in this book and I'm actually quite happy with this one um is this page here and I absolutely love how this one turned out I love the explosion of color on this page I remember I used Tombojo brush pens for basing a lot of the elements so um well I used Neo Color 2s for the for the wall the peach part of the wallpaper and I used my Tombojo brush pens to draw in those patterns or fill in those patterns and then I used pencils over top just to darken and give shadowing in certain areas I did use my Tombow Jewel brush pens to basically uh, do the blue of the sky outside and then I used pencils and I think, oh, and, and I used my Tombow Jewel brush pens for that as well. And then for a lot of the basing as well, I used my Tombow Jewel brush pens and then I went over with the pencils dry. I really, really like how this turned out. I'm glad I used my Posca pens a little bit more um, to make the cats look a little bit more fluffy, um, you know, to white out the clothing, the fabric. Um, so I think that looks a little bit better on this page. Um, and I think if I'm not mistaken, for, for the window, I think I got inspiration. Yeah, inspiration from Colouring with Alina. I think she's done this page and I must have seen it on Instagram or something and um, just to try and figure out how to do that window I wasn't sure what to do with it and I'm sure I got some inspiration for her from that win for that window but other than that um, yeah that's it for this page really nice her illustrations are beautiful and I always want to color them but they take me so long um, so yeah, I have to be quite picky, <laughs> but I'm doing one this month um, and I'll be having a color along on it in uh, Rhapsody in the Forest because I haven't got any colored pages in that particular book of Kanoko Agusa. So I will have another page colored by Kanoko Agusa this month. <laughs> All right, so that's um, Minuet de Bonheur. Then on to the next illustrator and this is Makiko Inotomi. So a little bit newer. Um, not very new now but one of the newer illustrators that have come out this year and i've done a few pages in this book so this i think was my first ever page in this book just a simple one spring season so i start i did this one in march this year um very simple just use soft pastels for the background and then i just use my faber castell arbitura pencils dry and i used a sakura metallic gel pen just to do the framework and I used um, Arteza water, metallic watercolour paints for the sprinkling, the gold sprinkling effect and that's it and that's what I'm going to do for pretty much all the pages so if I show you my other one that I've done like that yeah this one here so this is another page I've completed in the book and I, I'm going to keep them a little bit consistent so pretty much um, obviously I'll use my own colors but this background and the framework and the sprinkling effect I've basically done kept the same and um, yeah I did this in October I do have a video of I think maybe a how I color video mushrooms for my autumn series for this particular page just to show how I did a few different colors of mushrooms um, just to share with you um some some different shades of mushrooms that you can use because i tend to go for reddish ones quite a lot and green a lot um so i thought i'd try out a couple of other ones as well and share it with you guys so i've got a video on that um but yeah the rest of it i kept the same as the first one all right and then the another completed page oh yes this one i really enjoyed this page actually um, so I think Makiko Inotome, not I think, I know, Makiko Inotome has a PDF. Once, when you buy this book, I think I've mentioned it before, when you buy this book, you do get a QR code at the front of the book, um, which you can scan and go and sort of register or something on, on, uh, on the website and get the PDF version of this book uncolored. So you can always re print, the, print out your pages and color them. Or, and 
um, a colored version as well. So you can see Makiko and Otome's um, versions of the colored pages as well. I've tried to keep mine my own. Um, so I've not exactly copied um, the artist's version other than I think for the characters, I will. Um, so I have tried to copy the characters. Um, so that's Yuri the Mouse. Oh yeah, I forgot to say this is the name of this book is um, uh, Wild Mouse Yuri's Journey Sketch. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's Yuri the Mouse. And so I did copy the illustrator's version of Yuri and his little pet. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for any of the other characters as well. I will um, more than likely use the uh, illustrator's version of the characters, but the pages themselves, I've been doing it myself. So I use soft pastels for the sky, um, for the background, and for this uh, background of the grass as well. And then I just use my pencils to do a bit of shadowing, you know, around some of the elements to make them look 3D or look like they're popping out and not just flat on the page. So I try to attempt doing that. And then I just pretty much used my Faber Castell Albrecht Dura pencils dry for the rest of the page. And then lots of Posca white pen. And yeah, that's it. I really liked that. And I tried to, because it's about <laughs> Yuri the Mouse's journey and sketching what he sees um, wherever he goes. So I did try to sort of whatever was in the book, use the colors that I'd used um for those particular elements so like the butterfly and a pink flower and the blue flowers like that um but yeah maybe that's too much thought <laughs> for a coloring page but i really like this and then the only other page i have completed is this one here i absolutely love this page as well it was so much fun to color i have got if i'm not mistaken a color along video for this particular page up on the channel um and i use my soft pastels again for the background, a few shades to get that darkening effect. I used my soft pastels for the grass again, just to cover up the area. And then I used my pencils um, to darken up the shadows and give it a little bit more depth. I used, and then I used just my Faber Castell Albert Dura pencils um, dry for the rest of the page. And I used Posca white pen to try and do, so there were a few raindrops there that the illustrator had drawn in, but then I drew in a few more um, rain um and splashes um and drips off the leaves um you know i quite enjoyed doing that bit um just to give it a little bit extra so yeah that's it and in these pages i other than you know the metallic paint i've used to do the sprinkling on the title pages or you know the chapter pages probably that's probably the right word um i've, I've not really used any glitter or anything on these pages and i don't think you need them it's just the illustrations are stunning. I really enjoy this book and I really do hope that um, the illustrator comes out with a new book. Um, not that I've colored enough in this book, but yes, um, the illustrations are stunning. So that's Makiko Inotome's Wild Mouse Yuri's Journey sketch. Okay. And then the next one, uh, the next illustrator is Iwi. I have um, four of her books. I've got the romantic country series the three books and i have one uh world heritage travel through time i think it's called but i haven't colored in that one yet unfortunately but i'll show you the eerie books maybe i should show you the first book i got first rather than in their order so this is romantic country the second tale by eerie this is the english edition and this is the first book i got um of eerie's and I have struggled with the paper. Um, I really did. So this is the first ever Eerie page I coloured. And okay, yeah, it was earlier in my colouring journey. But um, so 31st December 2020, I think. So that's the year I started colouring, six months into my colouring. And this is the first book when I used my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils. When I used them on this paper, it just didn't turn out vibrant at all. I really struggled with the smooth paper. Um, so yeah, I wasn't very happy with this paper. I It was a challenge using it. Um, I enjoyed coloring. I enjoyed coloring the illustration, like the artwork. Eerie's artwork is absolutely beautiful, but this book, the English edition, I did not enjoy the paper. 
Um, so yeah, I, I just used my Faber Castell Albert Dura pencils um, pretty much on the whole page at that time. And that's it. I really like how I tried to do the sky there. Um, but the colours I chose. But yeah, so not much else to say about that page. And then this, and not, it was, this wasn't the second one, but this was a bit later, so last year. And I still struggled with the paper. And then the other thing I noticed I struggled with is colour choices for Eerie's pages. For some reason, I go for very pinkish colours. You'll see that even in one of the other books, I just somehow gravitate towards pink for Eerie's books. I don't know why. Um, until this year, when I've coloured something, I've sort of deviated away from it and I loved how it was. But yeah, I, I still feel I'm learning uh, my own style of colouring in her illustrations or her style of artwork. Um, so I, to begin with, I have struggled with Eerie's um, illustrations. But yeah, I, I'm not very happy with this page either. The colour choices, basically, mainly. Um, and yeah, struggling with the paper still. Not being able to get the depth of colour I like usually getting, the boldness of colours that I like to get. I'm still struggling with that. Um, and so I've not put much effort into the page. Um, I like how my uh, tablecloth turned out, the white part. Um, but other than that, it's okay. I'm not happy with the colours chosen. And then the next one I have in this book. Okay, I like this page, yes, but I remember still struggling with the paper. Um, I'm not able, I wasn't able to get a good smooth blend or anything like that. You can just sort of see the strokes. But on this particular page, I remember using the stressings to fill up the background wall and then using my pencils over top, trying to do that to try and get, uh, the, get the depth and the shading. But as you can see, you can sort of, it's not very well blended, but that's because I was struggling with the paper. Um, and then other than that, again, I just used my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils. I think I've used Tombow Dior brush pens for basing, like the leaves and stuff. And I think the wood and then went over with the pencils, right? And the blue. So I think those elements stand out a bit. So they're a bit bolder now. So I was trying to figure out how else to bring out the colours that I enjoy using. Um, or the vibrancy that I enjoy achieving. Um, I like how the page turned out. I like... The effect that I've got on this page but I remember still struggling with the paper there and then this is another page I've done in this book and I really like how this turned out as well again like as you can see my color choices are very pinkish um, but I think on this page it actually works um, so yeah I really love the vibrancy of all these lanterns and I remember using my Tombow Jewel brush pens for mapping out all those colors so those look a lot more vibrant because i've used the tomboy dual brush pens and then gone over with the pencils dry and then the parts of the page you can tell which are just pencils are quite um i know as vibrant so again still struggling with the paper but i realized that using tomboy dual brush pens was working now when i first got the book and i tried tomboy dual brush pens i i remember them uh, leaking through or bleeding through the page and maybe that was because I was still learning how to use my Tombow Dual Brush Pen so if I, do I have my test yeah, here so if you see I was sort of testing them out and I remember six, um, you know noting down that you, I can't use my Tombow uh, Dual Brush Pens on the in this book direct because they used to bleed through if you see that um, either bleed through or create shadowing and so I thought oh I can't use my Tombow Dual Brush Pens here but I think I was still learning how to use the brush pens um, maybe at that time I was too heavy handed because on this page it worked absolutely fine um, absolutely no bleed through so that was really good very lucky um, so yeah I started to figure out that yes you can use uh, certain other mediums to make the pages look a bit more vibrant Sorry for that noise, that's the postman. And then this is the most recent uh, Eerie page I've done. So I finally, this year, um, in October, decided to try out the book again. So I'd put away the book because I was really struggling. I'd got, 
a couple of the Japanese, the, the other two romantic country books in the Japanese editions, and I realised the paper was so much better. Um, so I was put off by this book for a little while. But then this year, I wanted to do this page. I really like this page. And I said, OK, I'm going to try the paper again. And this time it worked for me. And I absolutely love how this has turned out. And I love how bold and vibrant the colours, I've managed to get the colours. So the only thing I've done different on this page is used my Faber-Castell Albert Dura pencils as watercolour pencils on pretty much every element on this page. Um, so I activated it and then I went over with the pencils dry. And what that did was when I laid down the pencils on the paper and then um, activated it with water, it just gave me a tiny bit more roughness or tooth to the paper. Ugh, I don't know if tooth would be the right word because, um, but yeah, it, it just roughened up the paper a little bit so that I was able to then put down more layers and get more vibrant results to my pencils. That's, I think, hopefully the trick to the book. Hopefully when I do another page and I test it out the same uh, way I did this particular page, hopefully it will work. But yeah, that's what I did for this page. And then I also use my Tombow Jewel brush pens again for basing a lot of elements like the leaves, like these purple flowers, the clothing. Um, what else? What else? I think that's it. Maybe the bats. And then I went over with the pencils um, dry. And um, yeah, I this page I enjoyed and I like the results. Um, it's just so, you can just see the difference between that, for example, and this page here. Such a big difference in how bold the colours are. Um, so yeah, this one I definitely enjoyed and hopefully now I'll be able to come back to this book without having to avoid the paper. But I think that was the trick for me and hopefully it'll work again. And yeah, that's it. And then I used um, a lot of Thule Art paint pens. As you guys know, I've been enjoying those paint pens in my in my um, colouring books recently and I used quite a few of them just to block out even though Iwi's um, line art is very um, light it's not as dark as certain other coloring books that we have but I still used it to um, block out certain lines like for example where I wanted the light reflection so that it just emphasized that effect of the light reflection so everywhere I had light reflections um, and then a little bit on the leaves because I thought the leaves were getting a little bit lost and were not standing out so I just did that on the tips um, things like that obviously the uh fabric and um yeah do i have any glitter on this page maybe a tiny bit on the on the curtains and stuff like that but that's it i really enjoyed this page and i'm so happy that i figured out how to color in on this um english edition paper so that's Erie's the second tale and then the her other two books i've got are the Japanese edition so this is the first um the first book um so romantic country and oh yeah <laughs> this is the page I said I went very pink um so yeah I was still I'm still learning my style in her book so the the one I just showed you the Halloween one I absolutely love and now I know that I should try to go for my darker bolder colors rather than the more um you know not pastel but neon <laughs> this looks neon to me but you know the more pinkish and all those tones and I'm sure I'll prefer what I um produce with those other colors but anyways I do like how this turned out I think the pink works with the fact that this is a patisserie um but it is very very pink um I remember adding sort of these uh, cobblestones if you can call them cobblestones to the pavement because it was all blank there so I didn't know what to do so that's what I did at first I thought I would do sort of um, what was I going to do squares or something but I thought I wouldn't get it straight so I just decided to go for these um, shapes so that I didn't have to worry about them not being straight um, I think that was plain as well and I just made it look like wood effect on the floor I like that I went for a different color wood uh, for the doors and, you know, the window frames. Um, yeah, and I used, basically I used my Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing a lot of the elements again. And then I went over with the pencils dry. Now in the Japanese edition books, if I'm not mistaken, do I have 
here I did my testing there um the Tombow dual brush pens um you can lay them down direct on the paper and then use water to spread them like you know watercolor or like my watercolor pencil so you can blend them on the paper directly and so I did that in this book and I love doing that in some of these Japanese edition books when when it works like that on the paper so yeah in Eerie's uh th this particular book and the third tale the Tombow Jewel brush pens work that way so I did use my Tombow Jewel brush pens for a lot of the basing um and then I went over with my pencils dry I like how it turned I, I remember having fun doing this page and then when I stepped back after I finished coloring it I'm like whoa that is very pink um but that, that it's a page completed and I like it um and then this is another page I've done in the I think this is the only other page I've done yeah um in this book a bit more recent this was in July this year and I really like how this one turned out actually um so I used distress ink for the background but I remember using the drawing gum to block out all the flowers and the leaves um as I've mentioned before, I use Paper Castell Arbutura pencils, which are watercolour pencils. So if I did my pencil work first and then went over with my distress inks after, the pencils won't resist the distress ink. And in fact, it gets smudged and it sort of the pencils gets pulled onto the paper. So I can't do that. So I tend to do my distress ink work first and then go over with the pencils. And if I don't want that particular distress ink on the elements I'm colouring so for example I wouldn't want the blue to come onto the flowers I've started using drawing gum to block them those particular parts of the uh, illustrations or artwork line work um, I block it out with the drawing gum and then I use um, the distress ink and then I take off the drawing gum and I, it's a nice clean uh, line art that I can colour so yeah I use distress inks for the background there and then I did my pencil work just with my Arbutura pencils dry. I tried to do shadows to make the flowers look like they're popping out. Um, and then for the inner illustration, I used my Arbutura pencils activated with water for the for the wall part there. And then I also used my Tombow Jewel brush pens again, direct to the paper and then using water to pull it because it works on this paper, lovely. Um, I use my Thule Art. This was probably one of the first pages I was testing my Thule Art, my first set of Thule Art paint pens in, and I absolutely loved doing it. So I was do it, did it on the fabric and on the on the pillows here, sorry, the clothing and the pillows, and I really enjoyed using them. And on the flowers, um, and yeah, I remember it was this page that made me start enjoying my Thule Art paint pens. And yeah, and then I did quite I used glitter drop pens for quite a lot of the small elements, and that's it really liked coloring this page and i think i've done this for a hashtag on instagram um color with ukraine so color with ukraine and color with ukraine july um and i think the theme was childhood or children um so yeah i remember doing that page for that particular color along and i remember enjoying it and putting my heart into this page really enjoyed it all right, and those are the only two pages from Eerie's Romantic Country, the first one. And then the third one, the third Romantic Country, the third tale. I've only got the one page, but I absolutely love it. I've got some picked out this month, but I don't know if I'm going to get around to it. My colouring time has really reduced recently. But anyways, um, so this is a page I did in this book, and I absolutely love it. And I remember starting this last year and I was going really slow at it really enjoying my process and then I traveled um was it last year yeah last year around autumn time and then I traveled and I traveled for like three months and I started it in autumn so I'd already done the trees and stuff and I ended up finishing it in Easter or springtime so March 2022 this year um, because I didn't carry this book with me when I traveled um, and I hadn't finished it in time but sorry for the lighting it's not perfect um, but yeah I had so much fun with this page so I used my Albrecht Dura pencils activated with water for the sort of the sky and for the trees and all and then I went over with the pencils dry for that that's why it's so vibrant I tried to add in um the impression that there are more trees in the background um which is something new for me I loved the color I went for the 
um, building here and I try to do reflections of the trees again something new for me into the into the onto the glass of the window which I really enjoyed trying to do that and also here actually yeah and um, yeah and then I use my Arbitura pencils activated with water for pretty much everything uh, like the the path here and the grass and then I went over with the pencils dry um really like how my lamp post turned out I remember taking my time with this page I just really enjoyed the process of coloring this page but yeah I, I really like how that turned out and how I made the sign look and it looks like it's popping out um so I really uh, was happy with how that turned out um yeah and that's it really um, so I just used, yeah, the Albert Dura pencils, wet and dry. I used Tombow Dura brush pens, um, for the building. I remember using that with the water activated directly to the paper. Again, it works on this page. Um, and that's it. So some Bosco white pens, some glitter gel pens, if I can catch any on the little flowers. And, um, yeah, that's it. Tried to do some shadowing, like under the carriage. And I don't think that was very successful, but yeah. And that's my theory pages done. And I only have one more book left now, guys. And that is Nelko Neko's Story of Precious Cats. And I love this book. And I know she's coming out with a book this month. If it's not yet released. I don't remember when it's supposed to be released. But I'm not sure I'm going to like that. I'm waiting for a flip through for that one. Um, because I know her artwork will be absolutely stunning. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's something to do with girls and cats or something and I'm not huge on portraits I get bored coloring portraits I love doing scenes and you know intricate or detailed pages where there's so many different things to color rather than a portrait um and that's it on the page so I'll have to see what her uh what the flip throughs look like before I decide whether I'm going to get her book but this book I absolutely love um so yeah I've done a few pages in this book so I have done the character page and I think this is what helps me colour my pages in this book because it's quite relaxed. Now that I have figured out what I want my characters to look like, I have written down the um, my pencils that I've used for each of the characters. I do change up the clothing, but the fur I keep the same, the eyes I keep the same throughout the, the book. And so I've written down the... Um, colors I've used for each um, character and so it's easy for me to just go to a page and say okay I'm going to color this today I know exactly what the fur is going to be and the, that's the challenging part for me is fur and then I know that the rest of the page will be fun to color um, so now that the challenging part is mapped out um, it's easy for me to color in this book and I find it really relaxing so anyway so I've done the character page very simple I didn't want to do too much the page. I just wanted to do the characters and then get started on the book. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, a page I did this year. I have got a colour along. Not, no, not a colour along. Maybe a how I colour clothing or something, I think, with Tombow Jewel brush pens and pencils. So the Tombow Jewel brush pens work in this on this paper just like it did in Uri's uh, Japanese edition books where you can lay down the Tombow Jewel brush pens and use water to blend it uh, direct on the paper. So it works wonderful and no, it doesn't. Oh, okay, this is a bit of a um, silly page to show you, but it doesn't bleed through. Um, but yeah, I remember doing using my Faber-Castell Brook Jewel pencils for sort of the background. I didn't want to do too much of a background. I really love how this turned out because of the sort of, not white, but beige sort of, um flowers that I did which broke up all the rest of the bright flowers um I really enjoyed those the roses um I used Tombow jewel brushes for basing a lot of the elements like all the leaves the pink flowers um for the clothing and then I went over and yeah even for the scarf and stuff and then I went over with the pencils dry you can see elements that are used with Tombow Joe brush pens so they come out a lot more vibrant as you can tell the red is just standing out isn't it um but yeah so I remember really enjoying this page and yes I have got a color uh, not a color along a how I color fabric with Tombow Joe brush pens and pencils for this particular page and then I just sprinkled um Arteza metallic watercolor paint for the background sort of just to give it a little bit extra 
And the next, this is the first page that I did in this book when I first got the book. Um, and I used my Albert Dura pencils activated with water for the sky, the trees over there, the bushes, and then the grass. And then I went over and did the grass effect. I'm not too happy with my grass effect there, but I tried. And then I used my Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing all of the leaves and the berries. And then I went over with the pencils dry. And yeah, that's it. Do I have any sparkle? I don't have any sparkle on this page. I didn't even use my Posca white pen to white out the white fabric. I don't know why, but yeah. I really liked how this page turned out. It was a lot of leaves to do, but once it was all done, I was happy with the result. So that was the first one I ever did. Oh, the fun fair. I really had fun with this one. Um, again, <laughs> I think I've enjoyed every page I've colored in this book, actually. Um, I used my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils, activated with water for the sky. I tried to put in some clouds there. I also used it activated with water for the grass and I just um, then darkened up certain areas. I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing the cart and uh, certain colours like the clothing and the teacups and I remember really trying having fun with trying to do the bubble uh, the bubbles the balloons um, and trying to make them look transparent yet be colourful and show sort of shadows of the other balloons behind them. It was really hard, but I tried to do that and I really enjoyed it. Um, I can't remember now whether she, whether the illustrator had sort of drawn them in like that or if I just decided to do it. But either way, I'm really happy with how the balloons turned out. It was so much fun doing them. Um, I really like how their dresses turned out as well. This one looks like, like looks quite silky. Don't know how, but maybe because of the contrast between the really dark and the, the light makes it look a little bit like silk. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that page. And then I have some glitter gel pens for like the ribbons and things like that. I like how my popcorn turned out as well. <laughs> All right. And then this page I've got a color along for on the channel and I absolutely loved doing this page again. Um, I used my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils, activated with water for the background. Again, tried to add in um, clouds. I think, when did I do this one? This one was in September last year, and this is June this year. So you can see that I've, I'm trying a little bit harder to get my clouds a little bit better. So that's what it was last year, and that's what it is this year. So I am working on certain things. Um, but yeah, so I enjoyed how my clouds turned out on this particular page. I used the Albert Dura pencils activated with water for the, I think, for the grass as well. May have to watch the video to figure that out. Um, but yeah, you'll, if you do watch the video, you'll find that. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I did use Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing the flowers and the leaves. And I remember consciously making an effort that I was not going to do silver or pewter or gold. And so I tried to do copper for the bath and the water pump. Uh, really happy with how that turned out. Um, I think I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing the clothing and then went over with the pencils dry. Used Posca white pen quite a lot. I don't think there's, if any, there's any, yeah, there's no glitter on this page. I think a lot of these illustrations don't need the glitter in my uh, for my kind of um, colouring, my style of colouring. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed this page as well. And there is a colour along, I think the a full colour along for this page. Yeah. And then this one, I think is the most recent one I've done. Yeah, it is. This was from October this year. And um, I have got... Ha, not color along but how i color videos the autumn series i started on this particular page so i've done the how i color my pumpkins how i color the grapes the corn um the wheat and the leaves as well i think i showed how i colored these leaves on a different video as well yeah it's pretty much those elements i did should sort of share on some videos and I used my Faber Castell Albrecht Dura for pencils for those. Um, I, I used the I activated it water for the pumpkins, but for everything else, I used the pencils dry. And then for the cats, 
clothing I used the Tombow Draw brush pens for basing and then it went over with the pencils dry and the background I'd used soft pastels for the grass sort of background and the sky but I found it very very light I remember and then I went over with the pencils just darkening up darkening up the areas just to give it a little bit more depth and I really like how this page turned out it was so much fun coloring it and I love the end result so that's the most recent page and then this is the last one this was probably the second page I think I colored in this book so quite a older page well, older meaning last year. <laughs> and the lighting, sorry. So yeah, I really like how this page turned out too. So I used my arbitrary pencils, activated in certain areas, um, like for the wall there and for the the wood everywhere. And then I went over with the pencils dry. I used Tombow Jaw brush pens for basing again, um, the curtain, the books for laying out the colours, the leaves. And then I went over with the pencils dry as well. I tried to do light effects um, here and there. So for example, from the candle, I tried to give a little bit of a light effect. It's not very obvious, but like on, on you know, on the balls and the spoons here and then on the paper and on the bottle and then from the pumpkin onto the fabric here and onto um, the cloak of the cat. And I did a Harry Potter Theme. So I decided to, I think this was just plain and I decided to do a Gryffindor scarf or try to. Um, so yeah, I made it into like a Harry Potter cat and yeah, I really, really enjoyed colouring this page. Um, I like how my little magic ball or whatever you call them turned out there. I tried to do the light effects here as well. So yeah, I remember really enjoying trying to colour this page and put in some of those different effects on it and doing all the bottles and stuff like that so so much fun on this page um yeah like I said I've enjoyed literally every single page I've colored in this book and I think that's the last page in that particular book all right and that finishes um this particular video so I hope you guys enjoyed looking at my completed pages from my Japanese illustrators um and I can't even remember what I haven't shared with you guys now. Um, I think the other books that I have remaining are probably quite random. Well, random meaning maybe I have one book of that illustrator or they're like Colouring Heavens or Creative Havens are more of recent pictures. Um, because I just started colouring in Teresa Goodridge's books this year. Um, so yeah, I don't have that many more books to share with you. So I'll try and see what I have remaining and maybe do another video soon just to finish off showing you my completed pages since I started my colouring journey. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be back with you guys again very soon. So until then, happy colouring. Hope you guys are enjoying your December and you're going to be off for some time for, if you do work. Um, get some time off, be with the family. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys soon on the next video. So until then, take care and bye-bye.